Hey, good Sunday morning to you and welcome to Family Life Church. Uh, however you're watching, wherever or whenever you're watching, we want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in and, uh, and being with us today. Man, we miss seeing you personally, for sure. Looking forward to being able to do that again, but uh, I'm glad that we have this opportunity to communicate this way. And I hope you'll go to our website and uh, take a look at the fresh content we have there on our website, ways to put in prayer requests, ways to give content for kids and youth, uh, uh, life groups. So we hope you do that today. We're in this new series right now called, called He's Still Got the Whole World in His Hands. And the reason we're talking about that is because when life is uncertain, God is not. And that's an important message, especially today. And today, I want to talk to you about how we can pray until the peace comes. Now, you know, many people have asked me how the church is doing in times like this, uh, you know, because we've had to go 100% digital, a little different than any other experience we've had as a church. But usually when crises come, more people come to the church. Maybe that's why even you're tuning in today. Because usually when we're under stress, people tend to look up. And uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, flown much in airplanes. I know none of us are right now very much, but uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to fly and fly to different countries. And uh, I've never had an emergency happen where I've had to crash land or land on the Hudson, anything like that. But I have been on a plane when we've gone through a storm and the turbulence hit and things got pretty shaky. I've been in one where it shook and we hit an air pocket. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but uh, dropped and then all of a sudden everything began to rattle and the compartments started to come open. The, uh, the pilot came on and said, I'm gonna have the steward and stewardess to sit down for their own safety. That's when we got a little worried. All of a sudden I said, you know, this, this could be a little bit scary. Things got real quiet. And you know what? I heard several people praying. <laughs> And you know what? That tends to happen. When things get crazy, people look up. When we get under stress, that's when people lean into God. And you know, when I was sitting there on that plane and it was shaking and I was thinking about Jesus, I wasn't worried about what was going on at home. I wasn't worried about my unfinished project. The devil couldn't tempt me for nothing. I was focused on Jesus. And you know what? That is what happens in uncertain times. And we realize that times might be uncertain, but God is not. In fact, I would say that uncertain times are God's favorite environment because I think in those times it's when he gets the most accomplished. You know, uncertainty can create fear and insecurity, but when we look to him, we find peace and we can pray until the peace comes. And you know, when I look at my Bible, your favorite scripture as well as mine, this Bible was written about real people, not perfect people and in a world that we don't live in. Every story that we love is about God showing up in very uncertain times, in very difficult times. And what we are experiencing right now is normal in the Bible. Think about that. Because every time we look in the Bible, we're looking about difficult things. But so what we're experiencing is normal for the Bible because this word and what we're reading about today was written in uncertain times. And according to the Bible, we have nothing to fear. In fact, hindsight always tells us that if God could do it then, he can do it again. And today, we're going to hear from an expert. If you're not a Christian and you hear this, you might think, well, this, is, uh, this sounds crazy or even uh, a little bit delusional of what I'm about to read. But we're going to read... Uh, what we can do when we have to wait and there's no quick answers. Because what are we supposed to do when we wait? Some of us are waiting. Some of us are waiting for uh, you know, stimulus checks. Some of, some of you are waiting for unemployment to kick in. Some of you are waiting and trying to be patient, but you're watching your bank account shrink. Or some of you are waiting and you've not been able to see people that you love for a long time. What are we supposed to do in those situations? Well, there's a specific answer, and it's found in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. And now listen, uh, the book of Philippians was written to the church that was meeting in the city of Philippi. You might not know this, but this was the first church in Europe. And uh, context is so important. Anytime you read a passage, you want to know the context. And you know that the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to this church from Rome. Now, let me just tell you a little bit 
about the context of this because you see, Paul is this Jewish evangelist. His life has been changed by Jesus. He's traveling around the then known world and planting churches. And his message is this, the God of the Jews has come in the form of his son, Jesus. He died for you, he rose again, and you can have new life through him. And you don't have to live like a Jew to be accepted by God now. Anyone is welcome. Well, that part right there got him in big trouble with the Jewish leadership, and they hated him, and they hated that message. And what we see is when Paul went to Jerusalem, he gets arrested for this. And they arrest him, and they're trying to take him to trial and end his life. But the Roman police came in, if you will, and rescued Paul out of there and was trying to get to the bottom of what all the circumstances was going on. But see, the difference there is that Paul was not only Jewish, but he was also a Roman citizen. So Paul could appeal to Rome. And so basically, he didn't have to be turned over to the Jewish council for their verdict. He would be sent to Rome and have the emperor decide his case. And so what we read in church history is how the Apostle Paul is going to Rome. It's a crazy trip. He gets on a ship that gets swept out to sea in a storm, lost for two weeks. It finally crash lands on this, this island of Malta where he waits out another three months. I mean, you talk about tough, man. This guy was snake bit. He was out to sea. He swam for his life. But he finally gets to Rome and where he's under house arrest. <laughs> Anybody ever know what it's like to be stuck at home? Paul was in this house for two years, and during that time, he was able to teach to people, and he wrote many letters to the churches that he had helped plant around the then known world, and Philippians was one of those, and this is the book when he reads it. Church history tells us that after a little over two years, maybe three years, as with most uh, well-known prisoners, Paul was unceremoniously walked out of town. He was walked out of Rome, uh, on the Ossian Road, about two miles, and there he was beheaded uh, with little notice, and that was the end of Paul's life. And, but while he was there, he wrote this incredible passage uh, that normally we wouldn't give it much weight, but when you realize what Paul's life was like, when you realize the backdrop of his life, and you realize what he wrote, it's amazing. Paul had an amazing story. In fact, I don't know if you've ever been a small group or a life group, when somebody says, hey, why don't you share your story? Let me tell you, you never want to have to follow Paul because his story was too amazing. But here is what he writes with that background in mind. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't want you to miss the power of this passage, because many times we can just read it, say, oh, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. No, 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 there's so much more to that. Let's go through this. First of all, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Now, if he'd have said, hey, rejoice always, I would have closed the book and went, you don't know what I'm going through. But it's those middle three words there when he says, rejoice in the Lord always, that makes all the difference. It really talks about cause and location. Let me, let me illustrate it this way. If you replace those three words, how about this? Rejoice in your promotion always. Or rejoice in closing that deal always. Or rejoice in the fact that he called you back and there might be a second date always, you know. It's allowing the emotion of a moment that you can remember that brings out emotion uh, and, and, and connection to your heart. That's what he's saying. And again, I say rejoice. And in other words, he's saying rejoice in the Lord and reflect on God's goodness and mercy in your life until your emotions catch up with that reality. I don't know if you've ever been in an incredible moment. For some of us, when the Seahawks held up the Super Bowl trophy, you remember that feeling? Uh, for some of you, that was a bad feeling. Let's, let's go with your favorite team, whatever. When you can capture those emotions. You know, that's why we have music in church. Music is emotional. When we take time to worship God, there's emotions that come with that. 
Have you ever been in a baptism service and when someone comes out of the water, everybody cheers? Why is that? That's the emotion. That's what Paul is trying to tap into. He's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. I kind of wondered what, what that was about. I mean, does that really even fit in there? But here's what, here's life under stress. Let me just tell you this. I'm not at my best many times when I'm under stress to the people that I love the most. So what he's saying here is don't let uncertainty take its toll on your character. The way you treat and respond to others. Isn't that what happens? I mean, you know, kindness is great, but man, when I get under pressure, when things get difficult at home, that's not my go-to. But let me tell you, people are watching us like never before. And when we're following Jesus, he's saying, let that come out in great ways or let your gentleness be evident to all. And then he says, the Lord is near. And you know, the Lord might be near, but I feel like I'm stuck here, right? Here's what he's saying is, if life, if this life, if this is all there is to life, then we should panic. But let me tell you what, this isn't all there is to life. He's reminding us, the Lord is near. God is going to come again. Times are going to change. We have hope in God more than just this life. And so that's where he gets to the point. He's introduced this, and then he gets to where he says in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Now, I don't know when the last time you were struggling with something and someone came up and just said, hey, don't worry about it. Well, that's pretty easy to say. In fact, when I'm upset about something, when I'm under stress and somebody comes up and says, ah, don't worry about it, I want to punch him, to tell you the truth. Because, you know, don't just say, don't worry about it. But he's not really saying that. He's saying, don't be anxious about everything, but in every situation, he's leading us somewhere. But in every situation, we're going to channel that energy, that thought in the time. And look what he says next. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, if he just said, don't worry about anything but pray. A lot of times I think we've read that passage and we think that's what it says. Don't worry about anything but pray. There's so much more to this. Look how he stacks this up. He says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. But then he says, present your requests to God. That's not really a prayer word. I wanna, wanna dial into that a little bit because that word present actually is interpreted to solve a mystery or to reveal. So he's saying take your prayers with thanksgiving, your petitions, and reveal them to God. Reveal your requests to God. It's like solving a mystery associated with what is going on on the inside. This isn't about informing God. This is about discovering for yourself what you really fear and what you're really after, what you're really desiring. You see, here's the deal. Uncertainty will surface our deepest insecurities and our hidden values. And so what Paul is saying is don't just say, pray about it and it'll be over. No, he's saying, dial down into what you're really asking for. You know, it's beyond what the request is. Sometimes we can say, God, help me to get that house. God, help me to win this bid. God, help me uh, to close this deal. Or God, help me to uh, be able to get this job. If you dial into that, what are you really talking about? I, I would probably have to get honest and say, this is probably about my own security or my own concern for my family or my need to feel important, or my need to be viewed by my peers in a certain way, or maybe, if I'm honest, my fear that God doesn't really know where I'm at. So uncertainty will elicit fear, but fear, if it's explored, can reveal our deepest insecurities and desires, what we really want. Many of us never get to this level. You know, I've always heard that people are like an iceberg. You've seen an iceberg in the ocean. Have you ever seen a cross section of one? Really, only about 10% is visible above the waterline. 90% it's underwater. You know, my life is like that too. And what he's saying is press down into why I'm asking for God to do something. Really get to the bottom of 
that? Why do you want that? Why do you think you need that? Look at the why. God, here is what I want, but here is why I feel like I want it. And I think when we get to that place, it, it, we, we dig up really the things that we can really give over to God and really be honest with God. Because then he says, and the peace of God. After that, if we're able to not only present those prayers with thanksgiving, those petitions, but we present them, we reveal them to him. Verse 7, it says, and the peace of God. Not the peace that everything's going to be all right. Not the peace that, you know, uh, don't worry, be happy. That's regular peace in life. He's talking about, Paul would argue, you know, I don't have to have peace. <laughs> he might say, I don't want peace. I want to be released. You know, I don't want to be in Rome. I want to be home. That's probably what Paul is trying to say here. But he's saying the kind of peace we're going after doesn't make sense. It says it transcends all understanding. Peace that doesn't make any sense. Check this out. Because maybe nothing has changed but peace that allows me to re remain peaceful within that situation. And it says, that peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now really, it means Jesus himself, if we get to this level, he can stand guard over your heart and keeping you from uncertainty by controlling your emotions and your mind. I have to ask myself, where do I usually freak out? I usually freak out in my mind and in my heart. The nights that I can't sleep, the nights you can't sleep, I would say it's because your mind won't shut off. Look at this. Think about having the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. This is an amazing, amazing promise. What if you let God just stand over your heart and mind? right in the middle of the uncertainty. Because remember, even though things are uncertain, God is not, and he can give us peace. In times of uncertainty, we can pray until the peace comes. Now, I might have to do a little reality check right here with you. If you have ever experienced the peace of God in your life, in circumstances that don't call for peace, have you ever been in a situation where, man, you know, things were crazy, you were, your mind was running, your heart was hurting, but yet the peace of God came. If I was in a room right now, I'd say, raise your hand. So there you go, right where you're at, raise your hand. I'm watching, I'm waiting. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. But you know, it's because, and I know that because I've sat with people that they've gone through difficult things. Cancer has come in their life at a very inopportune time but I'm walking with these people that have a relationship with Jesus, and guess what? There's a crazy peace. There's a peace that makes no sense. Or I have the story, maybe you do too. You go through a divorce and you think my life should be over, but there is the peace of God. It's crazy peace that makes no sense. Did my circumstances change? No, but something changed in my heart and my mind. C.S. Lewis says it this way. He says, prayer doesn't so much change things, Prayer changes me. And isn't that the important thing? God allowing those uncertain times to bring you to a new place with him. So this is still available to us today. And I just didn't learn it from this Bible, even though this is so important, it's written here, but I learn it from people that I walk with when I watch it in their lives. You know, I've gone into hospital rooms where People are close to death and there's a very difficult time in their life. And I walk out of the room encouraged. Why is that? Because they have such a peace that they know everything is going to be okay. They know that the Lord is near. And I'm not saying we're all going to die, but I'm telling you, in uncertain times, we can trust God to be there in that peace. Sometimes God intervenes into our circumstances. We find the job. We, we get well we're accepted or we close the deal or she comes home. But there are other times that he will offer peace to us if we come to him open-handed and being honest about what the need and the cry of a heart is. If we pray until the peace comes, not just pray about it and everything's gonna be okay. Really pray. This is about placing into God's hand 
what only God's hands are capable of handling. You know, I don't know about you, but I've never felt more out of control in my whole life. We're waiting for our governors, our presidents, uh, uh, state officials to give us the green light to be able to do about anything. And it seems like the next news conference e either means I'm at home more or maybe I can come back out. I am complete, but you know what? God can handle this. In uncertain times, he is not uncertain. This is about placing into his hands and praying until the peace comes. It says it right here. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. <clears throat> By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know if you're a note taker, but if you have a pen and a paper, I want you to write something down because I want to give you a two-line prayer because I would like you to practice this this week. The first line of your prayer is simply this. Heavenly Father, I need you too. A lot of times, maybe you write your prayers and maybe you just go to your prayer place, but that first line is just, Heavenly Father, I need you too, fill in the blank. The second line is important. I want you to put this. If you don't, I am afraid that, fill in the blank. God, this is what I need you to do. But if you don't, I am afraid that, that will take you to a place of honesty and vulnerability before God like nothing else. And I'm telling you, when you can get to that, wouldn't you know, I've said this so many times to people, sometimes when I'm preaching on certain messages, I have to live it. <laughs> and you know what? There's been stressful things this week. There's been things on my heart and my mind that have kept me awake. And so I've been practicing this all week. I'm saying, okay, God, this is what I need you to do. But if you don't, here's what I'm afraid of. And as I begin to write that out, as I begin to focus on what I was really afraid of and giving it over to God, I felt a peace come. I'd like to tell you that I'm going to get this right from here on out, but Usually how it happens for me, I learn this and then I relearn it. But I'm telling you, there in your fear is the request that you must make known, not only to God, but to you, and hand it off to your Heavenly Father. At some points, just knowing what you fear and then giving it over to God is going to help you. Now, this is an incredible passage of Scripture. I encourage you to go back to it this week, Philippians Chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. And I believe it can help you and be a ministry to your heart and your life. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you, God, that you have still got the world in your hands. God, even when life is uncertain, you are not uncertain. God, we can rely on you. We can depend on you. And God, we, we thank you that you have control. And God, I pray for those that are listening right now. I pray for those that are watching this and are dealing with things in their own heart. And they're wondering, how can I have peace in this situation? And it's not just about rejoicing always. It's, God, help them to come to a place to rejoice in the Lord, to allow that emotion to sweep over them that they felt when they came to Christ or when something great happened in life, to the, dial into the faithfulness of who God is and to realize that's where the rejoicing come from and then taking it to the prayerful petitions with thanksgiving that we present or we bring out, reveal to you what's really going on in our heart. God, I pray for those that are dealing with physical situations. I pray for those that are dealing with emotional and relational situations that this whole COVID situation has made, made even worse. God, I pray that you would be there closer than ever. God, I pray that we would reveal those things in our heart to you today in a fresh and new way. God, I pray for those that might not have a relationship with you, but because of the stress, because of the, the difficulties, they're looking to you, similar to, to me when the, when the plane started getting bumpy, I began to pray. God, I pray as they look to you right now, you would be faithful as your word says, and you will connect with them. All they've got to do is ask. And God, I pray as they pray a courageous prayer of Jesus, come into my life, or Jesus, Walk with me. I need you. I know you will be there. God, help them to be honest with you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I pray this has been a blessing to you today. If you've made a decision for Christ, man, I'm telling you, on our website, there's a prayer button that you can click and just let us know that we'd love to follow up with you. Maybe you're watching this live and you can just leave a comment. I know someone uh, will follow up with you. We would love to connect with you or maybe you have a prayer request. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving and connecting and loving others. We love that. And, uh, but until I see you again, it's my privilege to say, I pray that God would bless you and keep you, that God would turn his face towards you, shine his countenance on your life, and here's that word again, and give you peace. Yeah, it's that crazy peace that doesn't make sense. Everything else might not change, but guess what? You will with God's peace. God bless you as you live the life today. Well, hey, we want to say thanks for being here with us today, joining us in this way. We're so glad that you're here, and we hope that this message was very uplifting and inspirational for you. We want to stay connected in these ways. We also want to remind you uh, that on our website, there are a couple of different things. First of all, there's a give button. Now, we want to make sure that we continuously give and are generous so that we can meet the needs of, of the things that we're already helping to support, like our missionaries, uh, outreach, things like that. So we really want to make sure that we stay generous during this time. So, and again, you can go to our website and check out that give button. Easy ways to give. Also on there is a, is a button that takes you to some weekly devotions, some devos that Pastor Dave and myself are doing. We're going to bring you weekly devos on Tuesday and Thursday of each week. And so we want to stay connected in that way. So go on there, check out that button and watch those devos weekly. And lastly, we want to remind you that on our website as well, there's a prayer button. If you have any needs, if there are things that come up that you need help with, you need prayer for, please utilize that button. Let us know about the needs that are out there that you guys have, because we want to stay connected also in this way and pray for you. So again, thanks so much for joining us today.